it's about 8.30 in the morning. I get to work at 10 o'clock a.m. on Sundays, maybe a little earlier. But I gotta take this very patient buddies out to go play some fetchy ballies. That's before coffee, that's before anything else. Hey, sit. Ah, park. Good boy. Nice catch, buddy. Good boy. Yeah, it doesn't take him too long to get tired. You see, he is quite the athlete and a, a very good boy, huh? Said daddy, throw the ball. Okay, I'm gonna continue my daddy doggy time. Fake out. All right, is this the last one? Nope. So I am not tired yet, Daddy. Now he's done. Nope. He's still got some energy. Oh, still not done. This gotta be, this is the last one, the last throw. Yeah, he said, I'm done. He said, I'm so tired, Daddy. Why you do that? He's a good boy. Yeah. He said, I'm a good boy. Good boy. All right, time to go home. Get my coffee, feed the cat, give her some water and some love. Get ready to go to work. So yeah, I'm getting run some kisses and uh, getting ready for the day at work today. So here's my sourdough starter. I'm basically just giving it a feeding, just doing it by eye real quick. Um, I'm keeping it out of the fridge and feeding it room temperature because I am going to do a sourdough biga dough for my next event as a little experimentation. I mean, we've done a few batches and we've learned that it's even at 5% sourdough biga, 24 hours isn't, I mean, is, is too much time for the dough. 
it gets a little overproof by then. So we might even do a same day dough for the, the event. Um, I'm trying to budget my cooking and eating around the house. So I've been buying meat in bulk and portioning it out and making little crock pot meals. Um, usually each meal I make makes really, or each dish I make makes two or three meals. Um, and it comes out to pretty much under $5 a meal. And I know what I'm putting in, so that's good. Um, getting a little part of a pork shoulder butt, some looks like onions and carrots and uh, pork fat from the last one I cooked uh, with some seasoning and water. And then I call it a day. And I mean, that's frozen, threw it right back in there. Turn on low for 24 hours. And uh, it really does come out fantastic every time so kind of been doing that and uh, it's just really easy I can literally throw the whole pot in the fridge so let it cool once it's done you know um, and I got some chicken from before that I'm eating now with some coffee carrot uh, carrots and celery get a, it's not too giant of a meal but it's something in my stomach because I could make something at work, sometimes I do. I'll show you that too when it comes down to it. Um, but this is just easy and quick and I, I'm satisfied so then when I'm going to make food, I'm not hungry. I usually eat some slices while I'm at work. Sometimes I make myself something in the kitchen. Um, I'll take myself home some things. The boss doesn't mind if I take celery, carrots and onions home. Adam, good morning. So this guy, he uh, got here a little earlier than me. And we're both scheduled for open, so he's the one who turned the lights on, everything like that. Um, on weekdays, you're only going to get one person opening. The other person is an afternoon guy. Um, so usually, yeah, I turn on all the lights and the vents and everything and keep going. Uh, I'm doing a voiceover because there's music playing. I don't want to get copyrighted. But the first thing we step into is dough management. So this is our small dough, nine ounce balls, makes 12 inch pizza. Um, putting them on a half sheet pan, I'm doing six, wrap, six, wrap, close it. That's gonna be my used first one. So I notice the other four trays of 12 small doughs are all basically hockey pucks. They were probably made the day before because Fridays and Saturdays are nuts and we go through a bunch of dough. So, we're gonna get them out of the trays, empty up the trays, put them on sheet pans. It makes for easier access during the rush. It empties up the dough trays so we can make some of the doughs that we wouldn't have available to us until later tonight. We can make them earlier in the day because we have empty dough trays to put the dough on. Um, and we're gonna use this all today anyway, so it kinda it evens itself out. The dough gets done earlier so you don't have hockey pucks on Monday and Tuesday and the ones we're making with this quote hockey puck dough is not going straight back in the walk-in it's actually going to stay out room temperature till we feel comfortable to throw it back in um, so then we do the large dough and the large dough is majority of what we will be using we only do this dough management sheet panning method um, on weekends when it's really busy. We don't do it on weekdays because usually the dough is perfect um, or maybe a little bit over. So doing this would make it become even more overproofed if it was. So you would be hurting yourself. And also there's a lot of prep type tasks that need to be done over this. So. For weekends, it's fantastic. For weekdays, don't recommend it. Um, this is also a good method if you don't have enough dough trays to fully manage a 48 hour fermentation. For us, the amount of dough trays we have is not good enough on the weekend, but if we upped it, it would be too much for the week. Um, so next we get onto the slice display window. I'm making a stuffer pizza, which this is kind of a bonus in the vlog because I probably will not make a separate video for this, but maybe I'll make a little short or something. We'll see. And um, 
but yeah, you basically lay out a dough over a pan that has a rim and you want to try to get it so you get some of the air out so that you can not have everything in the center but have it kind of dispersed evenly. And I make like a meat lover pizza with, there's no sauce inside of it, but it's going to be pepperoni, sausage, meatball, um, bacon, ham, and some grande mozzarella. And then it's going to get another dough on top of it, which you'll see here. So I slap it out. I don't put a crust on things like this. No crust on calzones, strombolis, stuff for pizzas, star pizzas don't get a crust. Um, I lightly press down on the rim and then with something cylindrical like an oil spray can, you kind of do a mixture of sliding and rolling. And just be kind of gentle, but at the same time use a little bit of force. <clears throat> and I'll conjoin the two doughs together and it kind of does all that work so you don't need to be pinching a bunch of dough together and it kind of does a better job than if you would. And I get a screen, flip it over, and you can see it's just a balloon. So I pop a hole, get some of that air out, and then I go and throw it in the oven. And that extra dough can be used for knots or whatever you want. Um, and then here now I move on to the star pizza. So I'm going to make a 24 inch crust discotti pasta. Um, and basically you're just cutting slits where you would cut it if you're cutting into eight. Um, and I do just sauce when I'm doing them for a display pie. If I was making this, somebody just wanted a whole star pizza, I would make the whole pizza right there. Um, and then what you're going to do is, uh, put ricotta in between those slits and enclose them like that. So you got basically little mini raviolis or uh, calzones on your pizza. And it should make one for each slice if you cut the slits right. And I throw it in just like that as a shell to put the toppings and cheese on once browning starts on the crust. So you can see Adam here, he is kind of scoring some doughs for the window. That was a, a nice score. And then here's a simple score where he doesn't really press out any air originally. He still does throughout the process of making it, but he kind of went right into scoring it. And you can see he's table stretching now. And then he does somewhat degas the center a little bit right there. And then he can pick it up and start slapping the dough. This is a 32 ounce dough to make a 24 inch pie. You can see it's pretty dang big. Um, so a lot of the window, all the pies that involve red sauce and have toppings, they will go in with a shell as we call it, or a sauce shell. Um, and that is literally just dough and sauce and you throw it in the oven. Once you see the first signs of browning on your crust, um, that's when you're gonna add your cheese and any other toppings you would use. Um, so you can see he just kinda puts two nice heaping ladles of sauce on there, and then he kinda smooths it out a little bit. On cheese pies, I wouldn't bother with this, but on something like this, it's not a bad idea to smooth it out a little bit. And he gets his shape right, make sure it's a circle. And just pops it in there in the oven. You can see that's still working. Same idea with the star pizza. Um, and then next he's doing a straight cheese pie. We usually do two or three to start the day because they go by fast. Most. 50% of kids that come in get cheese pies, uh, or cheese slices. So that's a little less sauce than you would use for a shell. No need to smooth it out and then just add your cheese. Um, the reason we don't do a shell for the cheese pies is because a cheese pie with very white cheese 
doesn't to me look as appealing and traditionally in new york new jersey it should be like an orange color on your regular or cheese slice um and then next uh i call it a clam shell because there's a white clam pizza and this is the shell for any white pizza so you just get a good bit of cheese and basically spread it out and throw it in the oven you can see me grabbing the stuffer because it's done putting it aside and you'll see I'll pull that out. By the time I pull that out, he's throwing the white pie in. So yeah, there's a lot of movement. Grab that shell, make a pepperoni. And yeah, I use the cutter to kind of cut bubbles when I get a chance. Um, it makes everything look a little nicer for display pies. And I try to for orders as well, but it really depends on what's going on. So here the you, this is like a perfect point of par baking where there's some slight browning but it's still majority white but you can tell it also won't deflate and then you put your cheese on the steaming sauce you put your toppings on the cheese and then you finish it off and the way we have our oven set and kind of how they are from the use um, the stone gets really hot and the bottoms of pizzas get really hot really fast so this is also the point where the bottoms like done cooking so once we get done with all of this, we really only need to cook the top of the pizza. So we'll move it down to the bottom oven that's more predominantly uh, top heat onto a screen where it's lifted up off the stone and won't become black, at least not by the time the pizza's done. And uh, yeah, so you can see it started on the top oven. Now it's going to end up on a screen on the bottom. And next uh, we got the Sicilian. This Sicilian is from the working with high hydration dough, the same day Detroit Sicilian recipe. Uh, but this is the one I did uh, on the video when I was at work making it. This is actually that Sicilian from that episode because um, this is the day after that. So whenever you make it Sicilian, you're going to want to throw just sauce and didn't have quite enough room to throw it in. So I made room. Throw it in with just sauce first. Let that sauce really start steaming. And I recommend doing this not just for the slice display window, but for uh, anybody who orders a Sicilian. You should definitely steam the sauce first. And you don't want to be too heavy with the cheese or too light, but a nice layer. Um, and then once that sauce is steaming, you got your cheese on it. You can definitely throw that bad boy right back inside. And you can see a uh, white pie is pretty much done already. It's got another shell. Got the stuffer out. Look at that beautiful cheese pie. Uh, the window's done. A beautiful star pizza. Beautiful Sicilian pizza. Stuffer pizza through some marinara and a garnish. Look at that pepperoni. Look at that undercarriage. Um, the pride and joy. The cheese pizza. It's beautiful. Uh, chicken parm, mushroom pie over here, uh, veggie, add banana peppers, and then a supreme. You got a white with spinach uh, and a white pie. Um, what pies go in the slice display is really up to us and our creativity, so that's kind of cool that we get the, the power to do that. But if something doesn't sell and we make it too many times in a row, we will get told not to make that for the window anymore. Um, so I do a lot of pies that are on the menu and then I throw in some oddballs like a stuff for pizza. Uh, here's Taylor and I'm messing with him because he's being a degenerate, betting on soccer while prepping for a marinara. And we got these mushrooms cut on Thursday and now we are portion them out for the day and no we don't order pre-cut mushrooms here are some meatballs cut on Thursday that we are portioning for the day and I ended up going through all of the meatballs and all of the mushrooms that we had cut so I did cut more of each of them um, I needed some spinach to get through the day so I, I just do like a rough chop a rough slice of of the spinach and uh, for me, the easiest way is just kind of grab it, hold it down tightly, and slice through it. And we operate out of third pans of spinach, so I filled up two of them. 
should be enough for the day. Um, there's a lot more prep than what I showed here, but I didn't want to spend too much energy showing you guys prep. And I also needed to charge the camera here and there because I have a probably $200, $300 camera and it runs really well when plugged in, but uh, battery doesn't last that long otherwise. So here is some chicken cutlet. Using that as a topping it is flour, egg, breadcrumb. Pretty uh, traditional recipe there. But you're going to want to let it cool before you go into dicing it or else it's a lot easier for the breading to come off when you're cutting it. So this is cooled chicken cutlet getting cut. Uh, fried chicken is a pretty popular pizza topping, so if you have a pizzeria or if you're impressing some guests, fried chicken makes a great pizza. If you don't know a marinara sauce, it's different than a pizza sauce, so if you have a good marinara sauce, a great pizza is uh, chicken parm, which is mozzarella, chicken cutlet, and marinara. Um, also meatball parm, eggplant parm, uh, sometimes a holy trinity parm where you're doing a uh, you're kind of doing a veal, egg or veal sausage and meatball, or veal beef and pork. I'm sorry. Uh, parm. Uh, sausage onion mean, pepper parm is a really good one too. So very simple pizzas, but they taste amazing and people love them. So here's me basically proving that we don't get pre-cut stuff. We actually do cut everything. But we cut it in bulk amounts, and then for the day we portion it so we don't waste all the cambros or pans that we have. Um, so yeah, this is actually me portioning a few more mushrooms for Monday. I try to make the trucks and logistics a little easier because it's Sunday and on Monday we get two trucks. So to make sure the mushrooms get rotated when they come in, I like to cut the last box. And now uh, prep's done, Adam was doing the lunch, still got a steady lunch going, and we were getting some dough done. We got two batches, two 50 pound of flour batches of dough done, and then he went on break, and I'm watching it holding down the pizza station while he's on break. And I got a couple calzones, spinach, garlic, mushroom, onion, and broccoli for dine-in that I'm making. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of showing how I go through a little pop. Can't really see, but I have a screen pretty much full of orders. And I always start with, it has a timer on how long it's been since the order was put in. And whatever I can see needs to be put in, I start with and uh, basically go from there. There is a priority, like for instance, a dine-in, if the time goes to 10 minutes, it should be in the oven, pick up 15 to 20 minutes, and then delivery is 30 minutes. It's got to be in the oven based on the times that the cash cashiers say. Um, so anybody who owns pizzerias just know that saying you're at 30 minutes on pickup is not ridiculous. Um, that's not a long time. Saying you're at 45 minutes to an hour on delivery is not a long time. And somebody getting their food in 20 to 25 minutes sitting down is not a long time. So don't fret about ticket times that much. This place is makes buku bucks for a pizzeria. And everybody's always fine with these times. Don't promise times you can't deliver. Best thing I can say. Um, but yeah, so keep in mind I'm by myself. Adam's on break. There is no oven guy for me. So I'm basically throwing as many pies in as I can before the first one comes out. I'm not rushing these pies. I am still giving the same love and passion to each one and keeping everything consistent. I'm not just throwing slop together to try to seem fast. I'm making nice, very edible pies. Um, and I don't push it. Like it's not insanely busy so I don't need to have a heart attack trying to get these orders in um, and then on smalls I like the clap technique because like you saw with the hockey pucks before a lot of times the dough is underproofed with the smalls when we get to it just because of the amount of dough trays that we have 
Um, and some days we just go through way more smalls than we expect and it just works out that way. This is good dough that is not over or underproofed at all that I'm using in my hand, but for the times I've had to use with pretty much hockey pucks, um, I've learned that the clap technique really helps with those stiff small doughs. You get a lot farther faster than you would table stretching or just slapping. Um, and then I love with smalls doing it the Neapolitan way where you can make it on the table. For instance, I got one on the peel, I'm just gonna slide off, but I'm also working one on the table that I will scoop and launch. It makes it so I can pretty much make two pizzas at the same time versus make one come back, make the next one. So I personally enjoy that. As you can see, I kind of sauce sauce both and then I cheese and topped one and then I'm gonna cheese and top the second one. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna throw one in. I'm gonna scoop up the second one. And throw that bad boy in. And I guess I got time for probably one or two more pizzas before the first one's done. A lot of times when I throw a pizza in, I will see where I'm actually at. Um, sometimes I will wing it and hope for the best, but that's only when I'm really busy. And honestly, that will hurt me more than help me most of the time because I might assume I have a minute and I don't. And then I have to remake a pie that got burnt and my bosses don't like that, the customer doesn't like that, and I beat myself up about it, so I don't do that. I usually do just check and see and use my eyes to tell how long something's gonna be. Uh, big tip is also not to open and close the oven too much more than you need to because you're gonna be letting heat out, so whenever I throw a pizza in, that is another reason I check at that time. And I don't, I don't look at it and say, oh, it's got a minute, I say, Oh, I look at it and I say, okay, it's got enough time for a small veggie pizza. And I might go look in the oven and see, okay, still got a minute, so I got enough time for a stromboli or whatever I gotta make next. Um, in this case, a large pizza. And I'm doing pretty good about getting more and more pizzas in before the first one's done. The ovens are about 500 degrees, so it's about eight minutes in a baker's pride. So in eight minutes, I got, I don't know, probably around eight or nine, maybe 10 pizzas in. Um, which isn't even me really trying to go as fast as possible. I'm kind of just going with the flow. Not overworking myself as I still have a whole dinner rush to go through later on. Yeah, I got a stromboli meatball, ricotta pesto. And then everything starts coming out. So if you remember, I started with those dining calzones. They take a little longer than pizza. Sold a few slices. Got those calzones finishing up. Got pizzas. You can see I try to have them fit in the box. That looks like almost perfectly 16 inches. Um, if anything, I want them slightly on the big side, but still to where you can close the box without destroying the pizza. A small pizza, um, I don't know. I could see why it would piss a lot of customers off, so I don't do that. These calzones are now done. Same as the first few pizzas. And you can see I switched cutters there. I have a cutter for red sauce pizzas. I have a cutter for white pizzas. And I have a cutter that have like red sauce and ricotta that turn kind of a pink or orange. Um, and that's so you don't get like ricotta on your cheese pie or you don't get um, red sauce on your white pie. 
and I still clean them off very often, but when it gets to a rush and you're cutting many in a row, you might not get to it. Um, and if I ever see like a topping on my cutter, I will wipe the cutter because I don't want a piece of sausage from the pizza before getting on the veggie pie right after, basically. Um, but if somebody does ask for a clean cutter, I do always use a brand new cutter. So if they can always request that and the servers know that and they will tell the customer if that's what they want. Otherwise, I go with my system. Um, but yeah, so I got things coming out. I got I try to get the boxes ready before when I can. I have them all very easily accessible for the times that I don't. And uh, yeah, this guy want a hot honey on his. And uh, yeah. It's hard to tell you exactly what's going on, but I do kind of remember this pop. Uh, yeah, I probably just got a few more things coming out. And then Adam should be coming back from his break, which means I'll be going online. So, I'm on break. I think my puppy's gonna be happy to see me. We'll see. Wonder if you even thought about me. There he is. Hey, buddy. Hey. Are right, down? Good boy. Uh, that thing is doing pretty well. That's about five hours in. Let's see how that pork looks. Smells pretty dang good. Not quite as good as when I do it without um, having it frozen, but still pretty, smells pretty good. Time to go play some fetchy ballies. Sorry. It is beautiful outside. It's nice to get outside. Out of the building for a little bit, walk with the puppy. Kind of resets my mindset. So I don't want to not love making pizza, you know. Park sit. Good boy. fake out all right so here we are this is the first wave of the dinner rush probably around 5 p.m. Um, I got this wave, showed a little bit of how we operate as a team. And uh, yeah, for the waves after this, I wasn't really able to record it, got a little too busy for that. Um, but this one was, we did it with ease. So he starts making pizza and I come behind him and I kind of get him ready with a sauced disc of dough. And I try to keep that train going. So his job is literally just to top pizzas. I'm looking at the orders to see what kind of dough he needs next, whether it gets red sauce or if it's a white type of pie. Um, and see, I already got one ready, so I'm moving on to the one after that. So as soon as he launches the pie, I got something else for him. But there's a small, and he can sauce both of those, and I can work on it. Got another small. 
So I can make two smalls real quick while he makes one large. With that extra peel, I can launch both of them. So that's three pizzas in really fast. And while he's launching that, I have time to stretch him out a dough. I see a wet spot on the peel, so I hit it with some flour and rub it in and move on to the next one. And he sauced it for me because basically when he's launching is when I'll try to sauce it if I have time. But if not, he might sauce it for me and I can cheese it for him or vice versa. But the main goal is to help him get through the pot. On Friday nights, a lot of times I have him make pizza because I can go in the background and help knock out a ton. And we'll have a separate oven guy on like a Friday night and I can turn around and help box pies, help the oven guy. I can stock up sauce, cheese, toppings for the pizza guy. And that's what we call the quarterback position. Um, or if you don't want to be fancy, it's the stretcher, which if that's all you're doing is just stretching pies without putting them on the peel or saucing them, it could be a really easy job. When you do this, you do have a lot of things moving at once, and it kind of keeps me in the zone. I don't get bored, and it helps me keep getting through the day. So we're probably gonna throw, you know, a good at least 15 pizzas or 15 food items in in a row, and then they're all just gonna kind of come out right around the same time, pretty back to back. And since I got the uh, the second break and he was by himself the whole time when I was on break he's gonna want some kind of five minute breather before the real bulk of the dinner rush and so will I as we are big on conserving our energy when this is extremely physical now he's taking his five minute breather because he did get everything in I helped him um, and I'm gonna just start getting into the chaos of the ovens which for me can be managed pretty easily. And I had three large pizzas and three small pizzas all come out right at the same time. So that was one oven full. And I get those sorted out, the larges, and I only had room for the three boxes because of the tripod. So I put the other three smalls um, on cardboard to sit for a sec until I got to them which was only a minute or so. And then I got to him. It looks like Adam's back helping somebody. Um, yeah, he's checking out the oven. He's giving me a hand too. And we're just kind of waiting. He was watching that, so I got some time to get some boxes out and plates and everything. Um, but yeah, we're basically going full hustle mode. I replaced some Parmesan for the oven, or Pecorino, I'm sorry. And got some beautiful pies coming out back to back. <laughs> and in the meantime, while all this is happening, there's probably only a two or three orders that are coming in and the time these are coming out. So luckily it wasn't the busiest Sunday where that was like a full screen. Basically we just threw in, which is probably like 15 orders. Um, and then in the meantime, only two or three orders came in while I was doing the ovens and, um, yeah, a lot of times a whole nother full screen would come in almost immediately, and that isn't well done pizza ordered that way. That's why it was so dark. That dine-in that I put on a cardboard was actually wrong, I noticed, and then I went and made it right, but I forgot to put mushrooms on it, so we had to uh, be kind of nice to that customer. Also, by the time this one came out, the mess up, um, they just got their appetizer, so it really wasn't a big deal. Dinner rush is completely over We're in the last 30 minutes of being open. So we get started on our last batch of dough. And while he's doing the little staggered orders that come in at the end of the night, I am cutting the dough and trying to roll as many as I can. 
and he might get a little bit of the cleaning done too. And once the dough's done, we both just bang out the rest of the cleaning and we call it a day. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. That's kind of what goes on in the building. Um, if you stay tuned, you can kind of see how the rest of my night went. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It, I'm glad it wasn't crazy busy. It made it easier to film everything. Because when it is really busy, I don't have much of a second to spare. Sometimes I don't get that hour break. Um, most of the time I do, though. It's really like if I got to train somebody or something, I'll have to stay through my break. But Adam is great, so we get everything done. Like you can see, it's all nice and shiny. And that's a day. Um, so yeah, winding down with Taylor the Degenerate, playing some chess at the end of the night. <laughs> and uh, both playing the London for any chess players out there. I'm playing the Black, ple black Pieces. I know it's hard to see what's what, kind of. But uh, there's a, a pretty little checkmate at the end from yours truly. We do play a lot of chess on the phone and on the table. And if any of you guys play on chess.com, definitely leave your uh, user down there. We can add each other as friends. Maybe I can trade some pizza knowledge for uh, chess knowledge here. But, yep. There's Roni up there. This is my little humble one bedroom apartment. I wonder if Parky Boy missed me. Gotta find my keys. Sometimes I wonder if he even knew I was gone. Hey, buddy. Oh, you got a sock. Hey, what did you mess up over here today? Look at that bone. Look at that bone. Look at that tail wagging. Good boy. Let's go for a walkies. But yeah. So that's a Sunday. Start by dough management. One guy does prep, one guy does the lunch rush. We go get whatever batches of dough done that we can, which today was two 50 pound batches of dough. We each take our break, we come back, we get hit with the uh, early part of the dinner rush, throughout the dinner rush, then at the tail end, this way, but at the tail end we uh, do the last dough, or whatever dough we have left over to make. Any empty dough tray is dough to make. Well. When we have 14 trays, we make a 50 pound batch of dough. And if we're a couple trays short, we will somehow, whether it's by making garlic knots or putting some dough on sheet pans, empty up some trays to make a full batch of dough. And then we just kind of close up the kitchen, get out of there, drivers sweep and mop. That's what was going on when I was playing chess. Come home, take care of the animals. Then usually I have a little bite to eat and take a shower and go to bed. Oh yeah, it was fun. Happy to have you on the journey with the pizziolo. A day in the life. Have a good night.